So obviously you are best known for being the lead singer of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees, Def Leppard. Congratulations about that. Thank I was you. there and that was awesome. But when you were there at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ceremony, you performed with Ian Hunter. But you're really passionate when you talk about artists you love and particularly when you talk about Ian. So I'm curious about where that passion comes from. You say it's your favorite band. Like, tell me about how you discovered them when you were young and like why it almost seems like you're on a mission to get them in the it Hall of Fame. It became a mission, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am on, I'm definitely on a mission. So yes, I am on a bit of a mission for that because what we are is what we are. I don't have to sit here and talk about me. Definitely takes care of itself. I'm, I'm happy to talk about it, but I'm not me, 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 me. I'm, I took, I'd rather talk about other bands. The passion for Motley Hoople came when I was 10. And then I heard Ian sing a song called The Original Mixed Up Kid on one of these compilation records. And I just totally fell in love with the story, the lyric, the voice. And then I realized he sounded a lot like Bob Dylan, but for some reason I hate Bob Dylan, but I love Ian Hunter's version of Bob Dylan. Ian was just Dylan-esque, but better, I thought, you know. Um, and he just had this kind of loner vibe. There was something about him, and it was a great cacophony that they made, but individually they weren't necessarily, you know, the, the best musicians in the world, but they made a hell of a sound. But the important thing was the songs were brilliant. They made great songs, they made commentary five years before its time. A lot of people will hear a song like Violence off the 1973 album and realize that he was actually talking about what would happen in London three years later when the punk movement started to kick off, you know. Um, but for me, it was the melodies and the tunes. There's a song called Through the Looking Glass on the Hoople, which is just the most phenomenal bit of work, as is Marionette, which rumor has it that when a, a, a young Freddie Mercury was watching Mott uh, on tour, they, they were playing this song, Marionette, because it's deemed a mini opera. It's quite possible. And even the guys in Queen said, yeah, man, I, I can see that. It was the inspiration behind Bohemian Rhapsody. So there's a lot of leakage that went in the other stuff, but I can't really explain why I like Mott the Hoople, well, I just do. I mean, the thing was, I'd been telling all these kids at school about Mott when they were still signed to Island Records and like, you're missing out on this thing. And then, unbeknownst to us, it had been going off under the, you know, under the radar. They'd moved over to DeFries, Bowie had given them this song, they recorded all the young dudes, and all of a sudden, the, whole world changed. Yeah. Everybody's world changed because you can have this conversation with Morrissey, Boy George, Duran Duran, me, um, and you know, the, half the punk bands on the planet. When they heard all the young dudes, it was a wake up call to there is something for us out there because they felt disfranchised, I think, from having their own music. They weren't into Uriah Heep or Black Sabbath or Led Zeppelin. But as a 12 year old, when I first heard all the young dudes, that, that and T-Rex, Electric Warrior, a year before, set me on my path. When Def Leppard were starting out, did you feel a similar um, kind of you need to evangelize maybe to your younger fans like about the music you grew up with and love the way you're doing now? Not when we started out, no. When we started out, we had no option but to play some covers because you couldn't get into venues unless you did. Certain yeah. places that we, we played, you were, they had, you were supposed to be a cover band um, because the clientele needed to hear stuff they knew. Mm. We used to get around that by saying, here's a song by, and it'd be one of ours, you know, we'd say it was by, you know, Des O'Connor or Foreigner or whatever, you know. And uh, that's, we, that's pretty brilliant. You know, we would say, this is a song by uh, Tony Orlando and Dawn, and we'd blast into Hello America. You know what I mean? That's great. And they, uh, the, the guy would pay us and go, I uh, wasn't so familiar with a lot of them songs, right? but it seems to have gone down quite well, so we'll have you back. When we first started out, before we had any songs, we, we obviously learnt to play stuff. The first song we ever played in the rehearsal space that we had was Suffragette City. We also played Pretty Vacant for what it's worth. The first gig we ever did in the school, we played our entire, everything we'd written, like eight or nine or 10 songs. And all the kids were stood around the outside of this gymnasium like, when do they finish? And then we kind of got these like, fake encore <laughs> and we came out and we did uh, Jailbreak by Tim Lizzie and they went mental. I mentioned the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ceremony and how um, Ian performed with you there. It was the finale of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ceremony you did all the young dudes. Yep, this is our old star That's jam, jam, except it's that song. Yes. It's, it's full circle. It's the song that's really got me wanting to do all this and now we're actually closing out 
our induction into the Rock and Roll of Fame with that song. It's just like licking the envelope <laughs> shut. <laughs> so, do you think but that yeah. is going to catch the attention of voters? Of, of course, you, all the members of Def Leppard are voters now, so that tips the ballot box a bit. But in terms of nominations, um, do you think Mott or Ian will get in? If I've got anything to do with it, they will. Who else would you advocate? T-Rex, Mott the Hoople. That'd be about it for now for me. I wouldn't <laughs> want to get greedy. My last question to you is, have you ever had any conversations with Ian Hunter where he has expressed his gratitude or amazement over all this kind of campaigning you do for him? Whether... Oh, every time I see him, <laughs> he looked in the eye and he went, well, through his shades, <laughs> and he says, I know what you're trying to do. I went, what? He says, you're trying to make me famous. And it's working. So thank you for everything you do to evangelize, not just Mott the Hoople, but all the great artists. And, My uh, pleasure. Always will be. I'm glad you're on the voting committee at the Hall of yeah, Fame now. Yeah, me too. Congrats me too. for that, too. Thank you.